Greetings, YouTube. Last night I had a dream that contained some gaming concepts. Yes, I dream gaining gaming concepts. Not the first time it's happened. Um, in the dream, I was a young sorcerer king. Um, and sorcerer in the sense that I had innate magical abilities, even though in the world there were formal wizards that had, had academic training. Mine was more along the lines of in the blood kind of thing. And the particular variety I had seemed to be something along the lines of uh, scion nomads. So moving objects at low level, because I was a low level character in the beginning of the, of the in, in this dream. So I was starting out, I was fairly young, i just become king because, well, how do you become king? your father dies. And his death was under somewhat mysterious circumstances, and I believed that the court wizard was involved. The court wizard was played by Alan Rickman, no less. Um, and even though my abilities were of the innate nature, I was training to improve them, you know, like training the force kind of thing, um, but I didn't have to do anything to get them. As I said, there were formal wizards who went to the academy, learned how to use use spells, had a spell book, the whole classic D&D tropes that we're all familiar with. Um, and the spell books are very important to a, to a wizard because that's where they keep all their spells. In this particular word, however, the relationship to your spell book could be much more intimate than it was traditionally. And it could be very intimate if you were involved in blood magic. Uh, and I suspected that the court wizard was involved in blood magic and that uh, he had some kind of dark pack with some, you know, malevolent force from outside nature kind of thing. And as a means to reveal him, I had used my somewhat minor abilities to move objects to acquire his spell book. And in court, as king, I re revealed that I had his spell book in my possession, which, as king, he really couldn't say no to, even though he was not happy about the fact that I suddenly had his spell book in my hand. Um, and I said that even though these items are very important to wizards, to some wizards, they are more important than others. Whereupon I tossed his spell book into a brazier of glowing coals. Um, the spell book burst into flames, as did Alan Rickman. Um, he was able to fight through the pain and disappear. So, um, engulfed in, in pain, screaming in agony, um, he still gets away. And... Uh, I tried to rally the court in the sense that, you know, we've just revealed that this person is evil. Um, the, uh, the One of the older wizards in the court that had didn't have as many political connections as, as the now immolated one had um, suddenly gets himself promoted to court wizard, and then I try to have a feast, which is whereupon I, I wake up. Unfortunately, it's when my alarm went, went off, so I don't know where the rest of the dream went. Um, my dream have usually have beginnings, middles, and ends. So it, I could have actually dreamed the ending of that if the alarm hadn't gone off. We'll never know where it went. But that got me thinking. In a world with wizards where blood magic exists, I thought, what kind of blood magic was I dreaming about? And since the book immolates, which is a, it's a book, that's not a big deal, but it caused the wizard to immolate, there was a definite connection between the two of these people, the person and the book. So why? So I got last night at work, I was playing with the ideas that to use a spellbook, to, to, to record spells in a spellbook, you have to use blood. Now, your average ethical wizard just uses animal blood. And there's animal blood available on a regular basis from any slaughtered uh, creature that's used for food. So acquiring blood is not difficult. Um, if you were to, say, use monster blood, though, you'd probably get some kind of benefit. Um, depending on the creature type, things like that, it would be applicable to different spells. you get the idea how it, like, you know, fire creature, fire spells, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, I figured that would give you a bonus to your spellcasting level for that spell. So if you were uh, casting and creating a scroll, it's a one-use item, bingo, you have it in your, in your book. Um, I think it would probably be something that can only be used a certain number of times a day, maybe once a day, something like that, because you don't want to get too much of a boost, because all it is is the acquisition of a slightly special item, because monster blood is not that uncommon in a world of high fantasy. If it's, it is less common, magic is probably less common, so the power scale probably moves with the, the rarity of monster blood. Um, but some wizards want more power than that. So they use their own blood. And there's a risk here, and it's considered ethically gray area, that you're now intimately linking yourself to your spellbook in a way that is 
enervating, but also dangerous. Because now the spellbook can be identified with you, and you cannot stop it. There's no way to not have someone pick your spellbook up who knows how to read, you know, how to, how to sense magic, and not know this spellbook belongs to Bob the Wizard. But it also means that you're actually putting some of your life force into the spells that you write down. Now, in the case of a scroll, it would be a temporary life force loss. In the case of a spellbook, it would be a uh, longer-term life uh, force loss, but not necessarily permanent. Um, so, if you want to have a spell on a scroll, and you want to apply a free metamagic feat, you use your blood. And you, for every point of your constitution, constitution damage you do, you get a one-level metamagic feat tossed in for free. So if you have a, a metamagic feat that normally raises the spell level by one, you lower your constitution score by one temporarily, and your sc scroll now has a bonus to it when it's cast. It, you didn't have to actually um, uh, use a higher spell slot to make that scroll. Now if you want this applied to your spell book, you can, but it only goes for a spell, and that's that loss of con is long term, so long as that spell is in your spell book. If you were to erase that spell, you would get back that constitution point or point, say if you're using a metamagic feat that has a cost of more than one. Um, but until you get rid of that, you erase that spell, you've lost those constitution points. And let's face it, constitution points are somewhat rare in most mages. Um, I suppose among Dwarven Mages, they'd be a little more common. Uh, so it, it's kind of a balancing figure. Yes, you're getting a spell that you could memorize, and you don't have to memorize it at a higher slot to get that metamagic feat, um, but you're also hurting yourself because you're becoming more of a glass cannon. You're, 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 you have power, a little bit more power, but you also have to deal with the fact that you now um, have a lower constitution score. But here's the thing that I thought about. What if you're using the blood of a murdered victim? Someone that you yourself, this spellcaster, has killed to harvest their blood to use. And I want to open this question up. What do you gain? Either on a scroll or in your spell book. Now obviously in my dream, the Alan Rickman character had used that kind of blood magic in his spell book and intimately linked himself to the point where you had a, a sympathetic magic uh, feature going on. When the book was burned, so was the wizard. Um, so, what do you get back? Um, and I haven't thought about this much. I've been pondering the idea, but I think I'd like to open this up before I came to a conclusion. I'd like to hear other people's thoughts on this. Um, and I may not actually post this immediately after I, 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 I I film it so I may have time for me to play with the idea before this actually sees the light of day and if it does I will probably think of it I'll I may bring it up in the comments below um, but I'm intrigued I want to be here what do people think you should get if you've made the moral choice or the immoral choice I should say um, to murder someone harvest their blood to use in your magic um, I think it's only appropriate by the way that we're discussing sorcerers and wizards that um, my uh, my my assumed uh, familiar has shown up to uh, be in the video, isn't she? Isn't she adorable? Yes, she is. Look at her. She's so happy I'm doing that. Um, now she's going to walk on my key keyboard tray. Why, thank you, dear. Um, so tell me, what do you think the blood of a murder victim should do in such a world where blood is intimately linked with spell books and scrolls? What kind of a boost does the wizard get for that effort? What kind of cost does the wizard have to pay to acquire that those those additional powers? Um, I'd be intrigued to hear. Um, I like to hear what people have to say. Occasionally people say things that I happen to really like. Even on YouTube, I know it's shocking, isn't it? Um, so get out there. Tell me, what do you think the cost of this blood magic should be?